Okay, so we're going to look at a progression we trained today uh, in MMA. I've got Jason here. He's facing me. And what's happening is it starts this back and forth sort of exchange where I start off throwing punches into kicks. Simple, simple kicks like cross into lead kick or jab stepping out to the rear kick to the leg and looking at my targeting. I'm not hitting hard. We're just uh, looking at setup and delivery. And then off of this, you do that a while, you trade back and forth doing that. And then the other person now has a counter where they're ready off of my kick to throw a punch. So the, what, they're, what they're trying to do is not get suckered into backing up or fading away right into my kicking range. That's what the punch was for. It was to get him to sort of fade and give me the room and, and put him out of position really so that I could kick him at will and not pay a price for it. So his goal now is to make me pay a price. So when I'm setting him up, if I throw a jab into a kick, he, boom, so he kept his ground, he held his ground and he threw that cross and then that made throwing that kick a sort of a mistake on my part. All right? So then off of this, he follows up. All right? So he follows up to the clinch. He chooses whether to go offside or grab my head, whatever's there. All right? So I set up the kick with a punch and he threw his, boom, and I'm out of position, so he follows up and he goes, boom, he's throwing knees. Now off of this, we do this back and forth to get the, you know, the, the hang of that. Until then, we're both looking at, at that particular moment where he's throwing knees from whatever clinch he gets. It could even be bear hug over under positions and things. We're looking at takedown opportunities. And so I'm in a position where if I'm down there and he's throwing knees, let's, we'll do it from the start. So I'm throwing, say, a, a punch into a kick. And he throws his and he got me. And he's throwing. Right here, it can amount to him throwing a knee and me catching it and then working a takedown off of that, or it could amount to him throwing knees to where he eventually follows up, say, to an underhook or something. Yeah, where he goes right to six and level and goes to my hip. But it might have been a progression off of this, boom, the person throwing knees, where an arm came up and I strung an underhook there, and now I'm throwing knees, but I also have an easy snatch single, right? So an underhook with the head in the crunch position here, it equates to kneeing opportunities as well as takedown opportunities. So we got this nice exchange because both fighters are doing intelligent things. Nobody's really making a mistake. They're just putting together their weapons in the right way, and there's a way to capitalize in each case. So now he's throwing knees, but let's say I'm throwing knees. He snatches the single, boom, takes me down, and right at this point here, we go live, where I put him in my guard, whether he yeah, open or close, and then from here, he, we commence the sparring. And he goes, I'm trying to mobilize his arms, using my legs to keep him in, Working underhooks and so forth. Very fine, things like that. Little elevating. But I'm staying busy, he's trying to pass, and we're working that way. Okay, so this is a, a nice way. If you get used to always working at a groundwork by itself, it's a good idea to look at realistic ways of introducing that, of getting to that point where you did exchange and striking. There was a takedown opportunity, you're aware that either from throwing the knees or being kneed, that there are ways of getting a takedown, getting a grip on him. And then from there, whoever got taken down, the last stage of it that's really technical and imperative is putting him in the guard. And not, or hip ice thing for that, and getting back up. You know, a lot of people when they're set down on their butt, they sit there like, they, like it had to be. Not a wrestler. A wrestler would move that hip, those hips out and get right back up if nothing's holding him down. And it's a habit for everybody, and everybody should have, especially in the night. All right, so then you go live with the guard, do it for a minute, stand up and start again. It's a very good exchange kind of training method that, uh, that allows you to create things at the beginning, different variations, but then from there, it goes to chaos.